Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, Dustin, we're going to answer the question. Is basically a $100 bottle of bourbon mm-hmm. just as good as a $400 bottle of bourbon? What do we got here today, my friend? Yeah, so we have this year's release of the Remus Repeal, the Batch 5, which this is the first one of these that's been a little bit hard to get, but I think if you wanted one, you were able to get it. So this isn't one of these bourbons you can't get. Mm-hmm. And this is a medley of bourbons just uh Distilled between, uh, sorry, yeah, barreled between 2005 and 2008, bottled in 2021. Mm-hmm. So if we can do math, Mike, uh, you're getting like some pretty old bourbon, a uh, 2005 to 2021. That's yeah, 15, 16, 16, year old 15 16 years old. Mm-hmm. That makes up 9% of this. But uh, even the youngest, 2008, I mean, that's got some age on it. Yeah, yeah 12, 13 year old. It's all MGP. Mm-hmm. And this is a official bottling from MGP. I unfortunately only bought one of these. I should have done two, but whatever. And this one's the uh, Christmas version, or St. Nick or something. This is very old St. Nick. This is a 13-year-old. I have no idea where they sourced it from. And this is from Perseverance or Preservance or, I don't know, we steal from your mom and hate old ladies and don't let them cross the street distillery. (laughs) Where they made a name for themselves, Mike. If you saw Malt Review, they picked their Whiskey of the Year last year. It was actually a St. Nick. Oh, that's right. They it was a 17 year old, which is highly, highly, highly rumored and very credibly sourced to believe it was Stitzel Weller that's been sitting in a vat for like 15 years. I believe that's a thing. Believe it or not, there seems to be a lot of Stitzel Weller sitting in vats out there. Mm. It seems to keep showing up. This one, again, we don't know where it came from, but the price tag on this one, the way they hinted about it, Made people think maybe this actually was some kind of special bourbon that they got from somewhere. All right, Dustin. So the main thing is when you compare these two bourbons, something you can pick up for less than hundred dollars, right around nine, and something that's going to be a super expensive bourbon if you can buy them at retail. Yes, that's again, the th- this is retail. We're not talking secondary. This is not a secondary discussion. This is MSRP. Yeah, secondary moves too much for me to even understand. It. I, I, yeah, I don't want. I don't want to track it. No, it's all right. All right, so let's. Um, uh, what do you want to start out with? Just go left to right, so we'll start out with the old, the expensive one here. Okay. I get apple cinnamon. A little bit of caramel. Oh, definitely caramel. Tootsie roll. Yeah, a little bit of oak. I mean, you can tell it's, you can tell this has some age to it. You're definitely not drinking young bourbon. Nice sweetness that's very, it's understated, mm-hmm. but it's just, it's an elegant sweetness. Yeah, if you're somebody who wants a super sweet bourbon, this probably isn't it, but it's not something that's going to offend. No, it's a little dry. Is a scotch lover. Is a scotch <laughs> lover first. Mm-hmm. I kind of, you know, it reminds me of a little bit of a dry note with, say, a sherry cast maturation. Yeah, it's drying. It's got some fall elements. Mm-hmm. Here's something. Everything about this is perfectly fine. Yeah, very light oak. Almost like a dry oak note. Yeah, it's got a good vanilla. Vanilla's definitely good. I mean, it's got a depth and complexity. This is not a simple bourbon. This isn't some... You know, it's not an eight-year-old, not a six-year-old. It's definitely, you know, got depth to it. Mm-hmm. A twinge of mint. This, this one actually has a really good nose on it. It's my first time messing with it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm actually, I'm almost like scared we got them flipped around because actually it's giving me a lot of notes of an MGP. Mm-hmm. No, we didn't, I didn't get them mixed around. So, really nice, dark, dense. I, I think it's got a great nose. I mean, honestly. Yeah, um, it's my first time with it, but very impressive nose. Um, again, drying wood note. Yeah. Mm hmm. A light caramel, Tootsie Roll. Mm hmm. A twinge of caramel, maybe in the middle of that Tootsie Roll. There's something like a toasted oak note to it as well. You can, you can tell this is an older bird. You can tell this has been a, wood a, a long time. Mm-hmm. I mean, color on this one's also pretty good. I mean, yeah, you're definitely not, it's not a super light. What's the ABV on this one? It's not cast rank 53.75. 53.75. Good ABV. Yeah, no, that's really kind of... I think it's a great bourbon note. And I want to say they do list on here non-chill filtered. And uh, they see here. And I think they just... Yeah, 107.5. I don't know why they chose that. But I am pretty sure this is not cast rank. It's just a... You know what's coming as a twins of brown sugar? Gotcha. And this is Artisan Lot Number One. It is handwritten that it's Lot One, so I guess they're planning on releasing this in the future. So 
Just a heads up. Although I do know that the locked ones are still around. They're a. I'll tell you what. That's a beautiful one. Yep. Let's move right. over. So now this Remus. Ooh, more aggressive. It's sweeter. Yeah, way sweeter. Way sweeter. We got a double lob corner. Oh man, to me this is this is like if this was apple cinnamon, this is apple jacks. But like it's got a nice rye note here. I think they both have some decent rye notes to them. Man, I, you know Thanksgiving just happened a few days ago. This smells like apple pie. Oh man, I love this. I mean, this is just, this is sweet without being like over the top because it's got that nice spicy kick it, at the it, end. It does have some nice spice to it. Yeah, I mean it's almost like apple cider, you know, where it's got that little bit of a nice spicy apples. Yeah, the spice note is. It, you think at first it comes off a bit aggressive, like you think cinnamon mm. or something like that. It might be, may be cinnamon, but something really rounds it off. Yeah, it, like and again, there's a sweetness to that spice. Almost. There's a bit of oak here, but the oak is very soft, very subtle. It's not. This is nowhere close to being over oaked. Mm. This is another nice one. I thought you'd make this easy on me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm enjoying this Remus. Yeah, no, it's just. No, no, I'll say this: this is a more aggressive nose on this Remus mm -hmm. by far. It's a sweeter nose, but it's not nearly as complex. It's a lot softer, whereas this one's a lot more dense. This this one is a lot harder to unpack, whereas this is very soft. Now this is also coming in at fifty, versus the one. This is hundred proof, one hundred seven. That can make a difference on something. Yeah, it's seven proof. Is not, it, it, I, I still feel like this is more complex, and I feel like this is more spirit driven. Like the, the the notes are jumping out more easily with this one than this. This one has more oak on it. This one comes off older, even though I think. Well, this one does have younger bourbon in it. They're similar age. Yes, yes, they're they're similar in age, but this one comes off a little bit, not younger in like the complexity or unrefined sense, but in that it just has a little less oak. Yeah, I mean, I, I would but say neither it, comes off over oaked either. It's very very well done. Both well done. Um, I would say because this is coming off so strong and so sweet that you know the cast didn't do as much of a job on it. Whatever cast they used, subdued a few things, added a few more elements. Again, I'll say this is a punchier nose, but I enjoy. Let me go back before I say. Be interested to see that. It's it's harder to nose this one now. This one had so much more going on. It's almost like cedar chips. I'm getting I'm getting cedar and nuttiness now. Actually, you said peanut before on another uh, rich we had. It's almost like a, a twinge of peanut shell too. Isn't it? There's a little bit of nut, yeah. You know, peanut shell, maybe walnut shell. Peanut's a common note you get in a lot of bourbons, but this is more um, almond to me, actually. It's something that bigger, it's something that isn't as salty, if that makes sense. It's definitely not salty. That's what something that isn't as salty. Isn't yeah, yeah. And I'm, yeah, I'm agreeing, 100%, 100% agree. Yeah, I prefer the nose on this. Interesting. I, I'm going to match the other way, I think, right now. This is more my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Dense, complex, mm -hmm. sweet, inviting, makes you want to go back to it. If you're a big fan of bourbon and sweet bourbons, this is, this is your nose, for sure. Yes. As a Scotch lover, man, I tell you what, I can appreciate it. Yeah, this. but again, if you're not a, when we say sweet lover, not a Buffalo Trace sweet lover per se, where you're super into like vanilla forward because this has got a lot of rice spice. Yeah, for sure. It does. It's spice got a, and caramel. Which gives it a nice balance for me, but I know some of you guys who are really big Buffalo Trace, you're, you know, you're chasing after the William Lurie Weller is like that's your number one bourbon or you're a big fan of the Pappy line. Mm -hmm. Those are more vanilla extract forward, whereas this has got a mixture of sweet and spicy. Oh, yeah, man. This is uh, Halloween and Thanksgiving, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to have the old granddad first. Mm -hmm. Probably smart, a little higher ABV, but I'm, I'm guessing it's not as aggressive on the palate as the forest flavors. A lot of oak. Uh, walnut actually is coming through here. Spices are here. I'm trying to discern if they're rye spice or if it's just the oak spice coming through. My guess is this is actually lower rye than I was thinking maybe a minute ago, but it's more just the oak that's doing it. A really dense oak element here in a really nice way. It's even drier and less sweet on the palate than it was on the nose. Really, it's, it's a very low sweetness bourbon. Buddy, the rye jumps out for me. Time. Really? You know, I don't have as many, mm -hmm. but you know, um, my coworker, my buddy Adam, loves rye, rye whiskey. Okay. Whenever he has rye, you know, it, it's that big minty type, you know, punch. As soon as I swallowed, I got heavy, heavy mint for me. Hmm. Um, I didn't get the mint. Oh, it, it's still lingering. It's still lingering on the sides. Shocking, shockingly minty. That is high rye. Hmm. I got nuttiness and oak. A little bit of oak. The nuttiness, yeah, is there. And it's, again, it's something less salty than a peanut. 
Um, very drying, very, very minty. Hmm. It's almost like a sherry cast. Interesting. Cast drink yeah. I actually want to go back to this one with the water to see if it comes out. A lot of times Mike will pick something up that I don't pick up until we do water. So. Just I'm telling you, that's, when, as soon as I swallowed, mm -hmm. the first one I picked up was mint. Interesting. It is shocking to me how, mint, how rye, mint rye that is. Really? Interesting. Big right. time. I mean, again, I, I don't deal with rice as much mm -hmm. as you guys do. For me, okay, you know why that's the case? It's not my thing. And I can sure. pick it up like that. You know what I'm saying? I can pick it up instantly. It's like when we have the emeralds. I'm like, oh, that clay note. Well, like, it's always there. I am telling you, that where I know. Well, so wow. now, <laughs> this is all meant to me. Okay, so we're going to the rumors? Yeah. Again, it's that Thanksgiving, apple pie, cinnamon like we talked about, and oh boy. Yep. You get that uh, right away. You get that dry, minty spiciness. Really, really, really nice. This is kind of my favorite way to, to experience a rye. Um, you yeah. also can come. You can tell it's thinner too. It's not as high ABV. That this rye, you're right. There's rye there, but you have to swallow, exhale twice before you pick up the rye. It's sweet, then it's rye. Yes, it, the rye is the finish for sure. So it's a back and forth. Even now, we're kind of battling back and forth. Like on my tongue, in the middle, <clears> in the middle <throat> pile, it's sweet. On the sides, you pick up the rye. Yeah, so about over half of this, almost 60% of this is 36% rye. Mm -hmm. The rest is 21%. So it's very high rye for a burger. I tell you what, it, it, it's a nice mix. It puts you mm -hmm. sweet rye, for sure. This yeah. one was, you know, I wouldn't say more rye. It's just they didn't have the sweet element to it. This, this, this really is drying. I mean, it very really lacks that uh, sweetness. As, as, as I mentioned before, it really comes off like a scotch to me as far as the dryness of it. Very dry. Yeah, I can see that. And then this one... Really rye forward, really sweet, beautiful, well done. You can definitely pick up that 15-year-old age here and like some leathers, tobacco. I mean, all of that stuff's in here. This one's harder for me to uncoil. And I mean, I've had about half the bottle of this, Mike. I picked this up in February. I've had plenty of time with this thing. And I've probably had this in a versus against 30 other bourbons and just small little taste here and there. How do you do? It usually kind of comes up middling. Okay, now smell it and put water to it. You can't smell rye instantly. I get peanut. It's a rye peanut. This I smell rye. This I smell peanut. I mean, you're making me think rye the more we talk about it, but honestly, no, I'm getting the peanut. I'm getting a little bit more. I'm getting like a butterscotch now a little bit. I'll say if you go high in the glass when you nose it, high here, you get sweeter. The lower you go, the more it gets. This reminds me of this reminds me of something like the old Carter that was kind of a mix of young and old um, MGP, mm -hmm. like probably a twenty one percent. But I don't know, old Carter MGP notes are just different than like this MGP. I know that's a weird kind of comment, but this reminds me of that. This is a Kentucky bourbon, so it's not MGP. I mean, my best guess is going to be honestly, I don't have a guess. I don't know what the, where the heck they got this from. I. Doesn't come off like Heaven Hill, doesn't come off like Barton, doesn't come off. But I'm telling you, with water, I don't this know where comes I got off it. More oh, completely disagree. All I'm smelling is rye on this one. There's a, there's a, it's vanilla there, rye. There's a counterbalance of sweetness to it that covers up a good amount of it. I mean, the whole finish on the nose of the, on, on the Remus is all rye to me, whereas this is. There might be some rye here, but just. Oh, good. We disagree. Yeah, I mean, there, there's there's definitely some rye in this, but the level you're saying is just that doesn't not what I'm getting. No, I mean this is a sharper rye, but the difference is again it's kind of balanced with the sweetness as I mentioned a few times before. With water, this has gotten very acidic for me, almost like a tomato juice type thing. It's still dense, it's still rich, has a really good body, but. It's giving me a note that, again, it's like it's got a little bit of sour, and again, I'm, I'm thinking like it's like a tomato juice kind of a thing going on here where... It's not that acidic. Not quite... It's like that with oak, and the oak's kind of balancing it. Vanilla is... I mean, it's barely got any vanilla. It's got barely any caramel. They're both there, but they're just very... Yeah, yeah very much in the background. I, I think it's a little bit of oak bitterness, oak bitterness rye. Yeah, but it's not over the top. Um, it's not over the top in oak either. It's not over oak by any stretch. It's just very, 
I really couldn't explain it any better way than that. It's just, it is. <laughs> so here's the thing. It's not worth four times the amount of money. For sure. Absolutely not. I, I'll go back to the same question I asked you on the lag holes. Mm -hmm. You were at a bar, you want to have a good time, which one would you prefer? I'm, I'm buying this one all day. I like this one. Really? I do. We I seem do. to disagree more on bourbon than anything else. I just, you know, I mean, again, it's drier. It's more towards my palate. This is this is very very sweet, too sweet for me. Well, not too sweet, but compared to these two, if I had mm -hmm. the two, I picked this one because I would want something this sweet if I could have this. Interesting, because you actually tend to like the sweeter bourbons, because you're you're usually the big uh, when we compare like a Buffalo sure. Trace, you tend to like Buffalo Trace more than I do. I, normally I do, but again, whatever that drying note is on here, I really appreciate on this one. So know. what is this worth to you? I don't know if I pay a hundred dollars more than a hundred dollars for either of them. Mm -hmm. You know, be completely transparent. I mean, again, they're seventy, eighty dollars whiskeys now. So again, overpriced, mm -hmm. overpriced. Mm -hmm. Not denying that for one second. I would absolutely between four hundred and ninety. I'm taking this all day. Yeah. No way, I'm paying four hundred dollars for that. To me, this is probably. I would be okay because it's fifty percent. If it was higher proof, I'd go higher than this. But because it's fifty percent, I could go about one twenty five on this one plus tax. No, I that's about my ceiling on this. This eighty is pushing it. I think this is seventy five dollar bourbon. Yeah, I that's mean, to me. That's what this should be. Is seventy five bucks. You know, I, I want to come back to these to see if my opinion changes at some point. But I'm telling you, man, I, this was a fun experience for me. Cool. Well, you know what? We've got an. I've got another bottle from the same distillery with a different label. Let's so try it. it's a twelve year. We'll uh, do a comparison of this and that one, which it'll be a three hundred versus four hundred dollar whiskey. So. Hundred dollars for an extra year. So this is overpriced whiskey. I get it. Oh, very overpriced. I love overpriced whiskey. That's all we drink. It's supposed to be drinking. So that's all we drink. <laughs> <laughs> At least according to a few, some of you guys. All right. So those are our thoughts <laughs> on these kind of these, these bourbons here. Um, let us know what you guys think. If you had a chance to have these, um, just until next time. What are those folks? Happy drinking. We'll see you next time. Some Keith and let's see where he's at.